It's no secret that I'm a huge fan of plasma blades. I mean, who is it? And while lightsabers are always going to be at the top of the list of cool plasma weapons, I'm especially fond of sci-fi blades that have like a solid structure that a plasma edge just kind of emanates off of. Aesthetically, I think it can look a little more interesting than a solid monocolor weapon, and buildy wise it's just going to be a lot easier. Oh look, a plasma! It's just what happens when you add more energy to gas, like electrical energy. The main characteristics of plasmas are that they're made of electrically charged particles. They're ionized, so they can actually conduct electric current. They're also usually really, really hot. And that's why plasmas are used as blades in so many different stories, since theoretically if your plasma was hot enough, it could burn or melt pretty much anything. In sci-fi, the typical explanation for how you can get a plasma blade is that the plasma is shaped by a magnetic field. That works because a plasma is made out of charged particles, and charged particles are affected by magnetic fields. Specifically, if I have a positively charged particle moving this way in a magnetic field that is pointed this way, then that particle will be pushed by what's called a Lorentz force this way. So you can keep track of the orientation of all those different directions and forces using your right hand, and this is called the right hand rule. Because we have a neodymium magnet on one side of our flyback transformer and a regular copper electrode on the other, Lorentz forces should shape our arc into a nice cone kind of a shape. Let's give that a try. Yeah! Basically a lightsaber. The best example, I think, of a shaped plasma in real life is the German Stellarator Fusion Reactor Wendelstein 7X. It shapes and contains a complex ribbon twisty donut shaped plasma within 70 liquid helium cooled superconducting magnets. That was a lot of words. And this is where things can get really crazy. The plasma inside can reach a temperature of 100 million degrees Fahrenheit. For reference, the center of our sun is 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. The superconducting magnets, meanwhile, have to be chilled to below negative 450 degrees Fahrenheit, which is just a couple of degrees above absolute zero. These two temperatures are 30 centimeters apart. Let's see, how, how, many, how many hundreds of feet is 30 centimeters? We got 10, we got 20, we got... 30. 30 centimeters, it's a little less than a foot. So on one side, you've got something that's about 9 degrees warmer than the absolute coldest possible temperature in the entire universe. And then the other side, you've got a temperature that's about four times hotter than the center of the sun. And your head would fit in between those two extremes. The tricky thing about shaping and containing a plasma with this method is you need a ridiculously powerful and really weird shaped magnetic field to make a blade. Plus, whatever hilt you have would have to fit superconducting magnets inside and then somehow project that magnetic field several feet away from itself when normally magnetic field strength drops off exponentially with distance. That's why I actually prefer... That's why I like solid blades with plasma edges so much. It's just ever so slightly less ridiculous to imagine plasmas being generated and shaped over a distance of a few inches rather than a few feet. It's so much less ridiculous, in fact, I think we should give it a try. Now, uh, I don't have any superconducting magnets on me, plumb out, uh, so we won't be able to use magnetic fields, and I also am going to need the plasma to be way cooler than a hundred million degrees Fahrenheit. So what we're going to try is just... We've got our same Jacob's Ladder setup again, only this time there's an electric leaf blower and an air hose blowing air right up the middle between those two electrodes. The electric arc ionizes that air stream and it creates a really cool looking sheet of corona plasma between the two electrodes. That's called a non-thermal plasma or a blown arc plasma because... In industry, this technique is used to sterilize surfaces or prepare them for painting. I think it looks like a sweet plasma dagger. Now I have to give props to Tommy Callaway for beating me to the punch on this idea. He's got a pretty cool proof of concept plasma weapon on his channel you should check out. With this Jacob's Ladder setup, the longest plasma sheet I've been able to make so far is less than a foot long. After that, it starts breaking up. I think you could extend that with higher voltages and smoother, more laminar airflow. But for now, I'll settle for a plasma machete rather than a big ol' sword.
like a weird Ghostbuster. So this whole setup is a little awkward for the time being since right now the quickest way for me to blow a ton of air through this is this electric leaf blower. But in the future we could incorporate like an EDF or maybe even like a mini jet engine into the hill. And it should make it a lot, a lot smaller and easier to carry. Now I should mention this is a non-thermal plasma. And what that means is that in this case it's not actually that hot. But it will still electrocute the mother-loving fudge out of you. So, do I really need to tell you not to try this at home? Cause, you shouldn't. Don't do it. Okay, let's stab some stuff with plasma. Let's see how plasma does against genuine American cardboard. Well, it's, uh, it's a little slower than cutting it the old-fashioned way, but I want a sci-fi box cutter, so we got it. I'd actually call that a pretty clean cut, all things considered. Curve's a little wide, though. <laughs> hey, Furby, do you want me to experiment on your brains? <laughs> this is really messed up. <laughs> oh no, he's dead! Hmm, I think this dummy could use a face tattoo. Just hold still! Much better. <laughs> I know a lot of you are thinking that that looks like the energy sword from Halo. I know that because I already saw all the comments on my Instagram. But the energy sword from Halo is two plasma blades, kind of on either side of your arm. And what we would be making would be two metal blades with a plasma kind of in between. It's, it's the opposite. It's like an inverse Halo energy sword. But, okay, I do kind of see the resemblance, so let me know in the comments if you want to see me try and build some kind of weird opposite day Halo Energy Sword. I guess that'd be kind of cool. Now, of course, electric leaf blowers and high voltage probes, those all cost money, and YouTube's been really weird recently about demonetizing videos. Uh, one of mine, uh, a grappling hook gun video, was just manually demonetized because... So I want to thank the folks at Audible for sponsoring this video. Nowadays, sponsorships are pretty much required for content creators to actually be able to make a living. And for this video, Audible's doing just that. Okay, so when you become an Audible member, you get three audio titles every month. That includes audio books, original audio programming, news, comedy. Basically, if you can hear it, it's probably on Audible. If you go to audible.com slash Alan Pan, they decide to use my name for the URL, audible.com slash Alan Pan or text Alan Pan to 500-500, you can start an exclusive 30-day free trial right now, and it includes a free book. Trust me, if you do any kind of work from home, you know that you get a little crazy, unless there's something like an audiobook playing in the background. Personally, I'd recommend listening to Crazy Rich Asians, because links are in the description if you want to start that 30-day free trial. Thank you, Audible, and thank you for watching. Um, there's another video in the pipeline. It should be out in just a few days, actually. It was supposed to come out before this video, then the scheduling got a little wonky, so the, the announcements and stuff are in there. But uh, it's from when I still had really long hair, so you don't want to miss that.